Hello, and welcome back to another video. This is the fifth episode of story in which Naruto and Shikamaru were the only survivors of the fourth war. Kurama, seeing them fade, sent them back to the Janan days to prevent the war. Make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons. Now let's begin. I'll be damned this mansion is rather impressive, but you are still spending some nights at my place. Shikamaru gave Naruto a stare as the two sat on the floor inside the Uzumaki library vault, scrolls and notebooks spread out around the two. Naruto jerked his head quickly in agreement, not ready to give up the home cooking and the safe haven the two had built at the Nara compound. This is amazing, oh look at this one it's a kinjutsu by any other standards. Naruto showed the scroll he was reading to Shikamaru. You're going to learn it aren't you? Shikamaru scanned the words quickly and smiled at what it did. Of course, it will be so useful. Naruto set it off to the side where a few other scrolls of jutsus he wanted to learn were located. If we use all of these, the war will be fought and won before word even gets back to Konoha that there was a problem at all. Yeah we will only be grounded for the rest of our lives if we succeed, Shikamaru sighed as he jotted down needed information from a scroll on the Kushios, Edo Tensei, summoning jutsu, reanimation, and the scroll Naruto had compiled on Nagato's Edo Rin Tensei no jutsu. The world would be safe, so I think it would be worth it. I hope at least, Yoshino-chan's bed rest is terrifying. I don't even want to know what Bachan and Uro Senen will do to me when they find out. Naruto shuddered, imagining what would happen when this was all said and done. Don't remind me. Shikamaru shuddered as well before he unrolled the scroll completely and stared at one line, he read it numerous times before he started to laugh. Are you okay? Naruto looked up, wary at the sudden laughter coming from the Nara. I know how to get them back to life without having to deal with the Sinigami. Shikamaru stated and Naruto got the biggest grin on his face at the news. How? If we combine the Edo Tensei and the Edo Rin Tensei their bodies will be like they were when they were brought back using the Edo Tensei. But their souls will be brought back for good with the Edo Rin Tensei. Once the war is done we can use that jutsu you found a while ago to make their bodies permanent. Shikamaru finished explaining before he grunted when Naruto flew across the floor to hug him. The two ended up in a pile on the floor with Shikamaru trapped under the blonde who was grinning ear to ear and rambling out his thanks to the Nara. Ahem, are we interrupting something? Tsunade coughed from the entrance where Jiraiya was standing beside her, his notebook out and pen moving quickly muttering something about Yaoi and a whole new audience. Not at all Bachan. Naruto beamed as he positioned himself so he was sitting on Shikamaru's stomach while the Nara was forced to stay splayed out on his back giving Naruto an unimpressed look. What do you need? While you two have been down here all day, we thought you would like to come up for dinner? Jiraiya said after getting whacked over the head by a Tsunade. All day? Naruto blinked owlishly up at them. Yes brat, all day. Now get off the other brat and come upstairs for dinner. Tsunade rolled her eyes before spinning on her heel and striding out of the library with Jiraiya being dragged along by his ear. Are you going to get off of me you troublesome blonde? Shikamaru asked and Naruto pretended to be thinking about it intensely. I am hungry. Naruto trailed off before he rolled off Shikamaru's stomach, but before Shikamaru could even heave a sigh of relief the blonde grabbed the black haired Janan around his waist and hoisted him up over his shoulder before he raced up the staircase towards the dining room where Tsunade, Jiraiya, Kakashi, Shizun and Tantan were waiting. Naruto dropped Shikamaru down onto a chair and slid into the one next to him, a foxy smile on his lips while Shikamaru breathed heavily shooting glares at the blonde. That's one way to enter a room. Shizun laughed only making Shikamaru's glares towards the blonde increase. So what were you two doing down there all day? Jiraiya asked curious about the two Janans as they dug into their food with gusto, as they hadn't eaten anything since breakfast. Looking at scrolls, reading about my clan's history and their jutsus, Naruto said honestly, that's what they were doing at the start. But then they came across some very useful information that would help them win the war and right some wrongs. Lady Tsunade, when is the Sun Daime going to name you God I'm? Shikamaru asked interested, he had grown close to the female Hokage in his timeline and hoped he could do so in this timeline as well. Tomorrow, I'm not looking forward to wearing that hat. Tsunade huffed at the idea of wearing what her sensei wore. You'll look beautiful like always. Jirai assured her and grinned at the blush that covered his old teammate's face before he was punched in the cheek for that comment. Shizun giggled while Naruto full out laughed at the two, Kakashi shook his head and Shikamaru smirked. Has Gigi told you if anyone made Chunin from the exams? Shikamaru asked, wondering if he would be promoted this time around as he didn't even get to fight. Actually. Yes. Tsunade stood up from her chair and walked over to a glass cabinet where two scrolls were sitting. 
Naruto Uzumaki and Shikamaru Nara for your achievements in the Forest of Death against Orochimaru and for the following events you two have been promoted to the level of Chunin. Tsunade gave the two preteens a scroll each and the two blinked in surprise before they smiled. Yes. Finally. Naruto pumped his fist into the air as Shikamaru smirked knowing that Naruto was ecstatic to moving up in the ranks, as he didn't like how he was a Jinan for so long before he made the jump to Hokage. Thank you Lady Tsunade. Shikamaru bowed his head. From what I heard you two deserve this promotion. Tsunade waved it, off. That was just my official first duty as Hokage. Sokashi Nisan, are you and Iruka Sensei doing good? Naruto turned a smirk onto his sensei after a while still happy about his tuning promotion and Kakashi froze at the question. You better be treating him right and not being such a big pervert around him, so you both are my Nisans and I would hate for something to happen to you if Iruka sensei was hurt in any way. The temperature in the room slowly dropped down as the blonde spoke lightly to his sensei. Don't forget that Iruka sensei is loved by all his students, new and old and wouldn't take kindly to him being hurt, Shikamaru said his part calmly. Don't forget what happened when Mizuki hurt Iruka sensei Naruto said cheerfully. My cage bun shines and I beat him into the ground and that was before I even made Janan and learned how to actually fight. Kakashi visibly swallowed hard at the words and the other adults looked at Naruto and Shikamaru with respect for making the legendary copy nin so nervous. I will do everything in my power to make sure Iruka sensei is happy and well. I would die for him. Kakashi swore, resolve glinting in his visible eye. That's all well and good Kakashi sensei, just. Naruto trailed off. For Shikamaru to pick right back up. Don't die for him, live for him. He would be hurt deeply if someone he cared so much for died. That goes for everyone, don't die for someone. Live for them. Naruto finished the thought. The room fell silent at the wisdom behind the words of the two chunins. When did you two get so deep? Jirai tried to joke, but it fell flat at the sad, battle-worn and weary looks in the chunin's eyes. Don't underestimate Asuro Senen. Naruto tapped the side of his nose before pushing his chair back as Shikamaru copied the movement. Thank you for dinner, but I should be getting home. Shikamaru bowed his head in respect. I'll walk you out. Naruto offered and the two left the dining room leaving a group of stunned adults behind them. There is something going on with us two, Tsunade said lacing her fingers together and resting her chin on them. We should discuss this with Shikaku-sama once you get settled into being goddamn Lady Tsunade. Kakashi said. I know he has noticed the change in the two as well and he had spent more time around the two and I believe he has a theory in the making. Good idea Kakashi. Tsunade nodded before the room fell silent once more. Do you think your cage bunshines have reached the others yet? Shikamaru asked in a low voice as the two approached the front door. I think so, they should be traveling with them and reaching the rally point in two days, I will be around for Bachan being announced as Hokage and then I will be off to meet them. Be careful while I'm gone. I intercepted a message from Itachi and Kisame saying that Hidan is on his own and is nearing Konoha. I didn't let the message carry on to Jiraiya, I figured you would want to deal with him personally? Naruto said in a whisper as he opened the door for Shikamaru. I do want to deal with him personally, I'll make sure I use the scroll we found. Good luck with meeting the others. Shikamaru smirked. Good luck with taking out Hidan. Again. Just be careful and I swear that if I feel your seal heat up I will be there in a flash and help you kick his ass. Naruto swore, gripping the Chunin's forearm as Shikamaru mirrored the movement and the two leaned their foreheads against each other in a show of brotherly love and loyalty. It was a show of two men who stabilized their bonds in war. I'll keep that in mind Nar, see you tomorrow. Shikamaru released the blonde and left the Senju estate. Naruto leaned against the door frame and watched him until he disappeared from sight. Hey Naruchan, we thought we would share some stories about Minato and Kushina tonight what do you think? Jiraiya poked his head into the foyer. Really? Naruto's whole face lit up. Yeah, really. Come on Naruchan. Jiraiya laughed and stepped back as Naruto ran past him into the living room where the others were waiting. He leapt onto the couch and made himself comfortable by laying his head on Kakashi's lap. The ex Sanba looked panicked for a moment before he slowly relaxed and started to pet Naruto's blonde hair. The rest of the night was filled with stories about Minato and Kushina about their days of being Shinan, how Kushina hated him for thinking she was a tomato and for thinking her a boy. Naruto listened intently, he had heard this story from his Kasan's chirk memory, but it was amazing to listen to all the other stories. The moon had risen high into the sky when Kakashi noticed that Naruto had stopped laughing and commenting. He looked down at his lap and saw the blonde had fallen asleep and was breathing evenly. He fell asleep, Kakashi said in a low tone. Take him to his bedroom won't you Kashi? 
Jiraiya smirked at the eyebrow at which the nickname got as Kakashi cradled Naruto against his chest and walked out of the living room and up to Naruto's room. Kakashi smirked when he saw the hippo hat and stuffed frog on one side of the bed. Kakashi pulled back the covers of the bed with his foot and tucked the sleeping blonde into the large bed and watched amused as Naruto curled on his side, arms clutching the stuffed frog and nightcap tightly as a happy sigh passed his parted lips. Kakashi took a moment to really look at the blonde and was taken back at how young he looked, how young he really was. With everything he had gone through he was still so young and innocent, Kakashi then swore to himself that he would protect his sensei's son, his Itoto in every way he could. He would not only live for Iruka he would live for Naruto as well. Delta slash tilde why do I have to wear this Uro Senen? Naruto whined, tugging at the traditional robe he was forced to wear for the ceremony where Tsunade was named God I'm. He didn't remember doing this much the first time around. Because Naruto you're a member of not only the Uzumaki clan, but also the Namikaze and Senju clans as well. Jiraiya looked uncomfortable in his own robe, but he was working past it. HMPF, just because I'm some prince of the Whirlpool village that shouldn't mean I should be forced to wear these things. Naruto huffed as he waved the much too long sleeves in front of his face. The robe was white with orange trim with the three clan symbols placed over the fabric. The Uzumaki was placed on his back, Senju was placed on his right arm and the Namikaze was placed on the left. I think that's what being a prince means Naruto-chan, Jiraiya chuckled and the two left the office to meet Tsunade, Hiruzen in the Council of Elders. Naruto hissed slowly when he saw Danzo standing there and moved slightly to guard Jiraiya and Tsunade's flanks just in case. Are you ready to become Hokage Tsunade? Hiruzen looked at Tsunade who was wearing a Senju and Uzumaki clan robe and not looking happy about it at all. Hi Sensei, I'm ready. Tsunade smirked at the three elders who made Naruto's life lonely and who knows what else they have done to this village. Follow me then, it's time to introduce the village to their new leader. Hiruzen opened a door that led to staircase inside of the Hokage monument where Tsunade would be introduced to the village from. It was a silent climb other than the grumbling from Naruto and Tsunade about climbing the steps in their long clan robes. Finally they reached the top and they exited out into the sunlight to see all of Konoha gathered in the streets below, all of them looking up at the monument expectantly. Naruto using his heightened eyesight he could easily spot Shikamaru standing with the Konoha 12, Akira and Akito standing behind the group with the families of the Konoha 12 and the Jounin senseis. Naruto smirked. His friends looked just as awkward as he did in their clan robes so he didn't feel as horrible about wearing them now. Naruto stuck to Jiraiya's side while the sun Daime stepped forward and raised an arm to the crowd that cheered for him. My village, it has been a pleasure to be your Hokage for so long and it has warmed my heart to see our village and its people flourish and come together under all types of trials. However my time as your Hokage has come to a close, I am here to introduce you all to your new Hokage. I give you one of the legendary Sanin. A member of one of the founding clans of Konoha, my old student and your new god I'm. Tsunade Sanju. Hiruzen stepped to the side after making his speech as Tsunade stepped forward to a roar of applause as the Sandaime placed the hat onto his old student's head. Konoha. Tsunade raised her arms up to the crowd and they settled down. I am proud to become your new Hokage and I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to help Konoha achieve greatness and to protect it to the best of my abilities from any threat. That got a roar of approval from the crowd while Naruto noticed that the traitorous elders shift on their feet and exchange worried looks. Before I let you all go, I have something that needs to be discussed. Tsunade turned to look at Naruto who blinked confused at her. Jiraiya pushed his godson forward slightly and Naruto stood beside Tsunade who moved him in front of her and placed her hands on his shoulders. She growled when she heard some cries out of outrage at the demon being beside the new Hokage. Naruto spotted the Konoha 12. Minus Sasuke of course, the Nara clan, Akira and Akito along with the Jounin senseis send evil glares at the nearby villagers or ninjas who spoke out against Naruto. My grandfather was Hashirama Senju, my granduncle was Doberama Senju and my grandmother was Mito Uzumaki. Naruto Uzumaki is my great nephew and now a part of the Senju clan, I know how he was treated in this village and I thought I would let you all know that if anything happens to him, I will not be acting as Godam when I come to visit those responsible but as an overprotected great ant with the strength of a legendary Sanin. Tsunade nicely threatened the whole village and silence settled over the village now that the speeches are out of the way, let's celebrate, Tsunade cried out and that earned cheers from the crowd. Naruto was escorted away from the front and was positioned between Tsunade and Jiraiya as the trio walked past Danzo and the other elders. The Sundaime nodded at Tsunade and Jiraiya before he shushined away. Naruto hoped he was going to talk to Sasuke about what really happened with his clan and his older brother. 
In the meantime he had a trip to prepare for and he hoped Shikamaru had been able to sneak away to adjust his trap for Hidon. Tilda slash Tilda Hiruzen settled in the small house Sasuke had taken up in the abandoned Uchiha district. Sasuke came back into the living room with two cups of tea that he gave to the Sandaime. My thanks Sasuke. Hiruzen smiled kindly at Sasuke as he sipped the drink and waited until Sasuke was settled. I'm sure you are wondering why I wish to talk to you. Hiruzen set his cup down and Sasuke followed suit. Hi, Sasuke said with respect for the older man, he was on edge about why he was being talked to by the Sandaime. I wish to wait until you are older to tell you this, but things have changed. Sasuke I need to tell you the truth behind the night your clan was killed, Hiruzen stated grimly and Sasuke froze. What do you mean the truth? Itachi killed our clan and I will kill him, Sasuke hissed out. Please hold your judgment until the end, there are people who do not wish for this information to ever be released, Hiruz inside his mind going to Donzo. I will hear what you have to say. Sasuke decided in seeing the look in the Sandaime's eyes. It all started after the Nine Tails attacked the village. The Uchiha's Sharingan can control tailed beasts and as I'm sure you can imagine tension became high with the Uchiha's in the village and they were put under close surveillance and were placed back in this compound away from the rest of the village that looked at them with mistrust not knowing what to believe. Hiruzen started his tale and saw Sasuke listening intently. Some Uchiha's were still opposed to the Senju government and started to plan a coup d'etat. Your brother grew up during the Third Shinobi War and it turned him into a pacifist, he became a Nanbu to help keep the peace and the Uchiha's forced him to spy on the rest of Konoha. When in fact Itachi was spying on the Uchiha's for us because your brother knew that the coup d'etat would spark another war. That went against everything he wanted for the future. I need you to know that I was against the treatment the Uchiha's were getting and I very much wanted to settle things peacefully. However not all people felt this way, Donzo convinced Itachi that slaughtering your clan was the only way to stop an oncoming war. He agreed on the single condition that you, his little brother would be spared, Hiruzen said and stayed silent to gauge Sasuke's reaction to the news. He. I Nisan, Sasuke stammered out, his mind swirling with the new information. I know this is a lot to take in, but your brother made the ultimate sacrifice for peace. As long as you were safe he would have done anything to protect you and let you believe that you were part of a proud clan. The San Daime said softly. He did all of that to protect me? Sasuke asked in a quiet voice. He did and you should know that no matter what he is doing now he always has your well-being in mind. There is also something you need to know about the Sharingan, Hiruzen said slowly. What about it? Sasuke looked interested. The truth behind the activation of the Sharingan? Hiruzen said with a heavy sigh and took a breath as Sasuke looked unexpectedly. When an Uchiha that is known love losses it, it turns into a much stronger hatred. Something inside the Uchiha's minds changes and it materializes in a physical form. The Sharingan was the result. It only furthered to lock in the Uchiha's hate into place and with the lust for more power the Sharingan wielders become more closed off and hate-filled. Not even Itachi knew of the history behind the Uchiha's Keke Genkai, I was only told by my sensei the Nidaim Hokage when he named me his successor. When in fact, love makes the Sharingan much more powerful than it would be if the user was filled with hatred. I've seen it happen. Hiruzen explained softly. I think I need some time to process this, Sasuke said slowly. Please do not hold one man's action against the whole village, just focus on your brother and I do hope you change your mind about wanting to kill him. It would be wise to keep this to yourself, no one must know any of this or Itachi's life could be in danger as well as both of ours. Hiruzen patted Sasuke's shoulder gently. The raven nodded slowly and kept his eyes down as the Sandaime left the house with a weary sigh. Naruto looked at the sun that was peeking over the horizon from the large window in his room. He decided to hench his clothes from Jiraiya into the clothes he wore while in sage mode he switched out the summoning contract with another large scroll filled with anything and everything he would need for his mission. He quickly left one of his permanent cage bunshines in his place asleep on his bed while he slipped out of the window and leapt tree to tree in the backyard of the Senju estate. He had done some exploring when replacing the Hiroshin seals around the village and found a way to leave the village that bypassed the ninjas on guard duty at the front gate. He silently slipped out of the village and then took off in the direction of where the others were gathering. It didn't take long even with running on water to reach his destination. Nami no Kuni, the land of waves. Naruto laughed aloud when he stopped in front of the, the great Naruto Uzumaki bridge and he leaned against the railing, as this was the rally point to meet the others. You weren't kidding when you told me you had a bridge named after you. Gara commented as he dropped down from a stream of sand, the bunshine of Naruto disappearing as the one tails Jinchuriki stood next to the nine tails Jinchuriki. Naruto noticed that Gara too had henched his clothes to the ones he wore during the war. 
Why would I lie about something as awesome as this? Naruto smirked. I can't believe you're seriously assembling all the Jinchurikis in one place, this is asking for an attack to happen. Gara commented as he eyed the small island that Naruto chose as a rally point. If they followed my Bunshine's instructions then no one would even notice we are gone. Also if the Bijus and my Bunshines followed my plan the others should have their memories back and this shouldn't be too awkward of a meeting, Naruto laughed before he was grabbed in a hug from behind, knowing the Churka signature he didn't even bother to react. Naruto. Killer B laughed joyfully as he hugged the Nine Tails Jinchuriki happily. Hey B, how you been doing? Naruto laughed as he let the taller man hug him before Naruto was dropped to the ground and Gara was also pulled into a hug even through the redhead protested something fierce. Since Kyuki and your Bunshine gave me my memories and powers back, I've been great, B said, his voice dropping as the three stood on the bridge waiting for the others. That's good, I'm glad you guys are back. Naruto smiled at the two Jinchurikis who smiled back fondly. Us too Naruto. Gara smiled and rolled his deal eyes at something Shukaku must have said. Hey you guys. A female voice called out from above. The group, the three looked up and smiled as a girl with short, spiky mint green hair with a Taki Hitai 8 on her right arm and two wings on her back as she flew down to greet them, a puff of smoke by her back showing that the Naruto Bunshine had disappeared. Foo. Naruto smiled and yelped a bit when the girl let her wings disappear and she fell into the blonde's arms, hugging him. Naruto, Gara and B. I'm so glad you gave me my memories and powers back. I swear I'll do my best to protect Cho Mei this time around. Fu smiled brightly and determination glinted in her orange eyes. I'm glad you think so too Fu. Naruto smiled and patted the girl's head as she jumped up and landed on Killer B's broad shoulder and settled there, his hand coming to rest on her small waist to make sure she didn't fall off. I see I was not misled, you all truly are here. Utakata commented as the bunshine puffed away as he joined the others on the bridge, his long brown hair still covering his left side of his face leaving his single gold eye visible. Of course, like I would lie about this Utakata. It's good to see you are well. Naruto held his hand out and the two shook their hands firmly before Utakata leaned on the opposite railing and started to blow bubbles with Fu watching and giggling every so often as the bubbles gently floated around her. Naruto smiled when he spotted a small smile work its way onto Utakata's lips before it disappeared. Naruto, Gara, B, Fu, Utakata. Yugito Ni of Kuma joined their group. The blonde accepted the fist bump he offered her and that earned her a smile and Fu waved happily at the two tails Jinchuriki. Yugi. Can you grow your nails to any length you want? Fu asked in awe and the Jounin from Kumo smiled slightly and grew her fingernails to an extremely long length. Hi, I can. Yugito shook her head at the younger girl's wonder. Have you thought of painting them? You could get a really cool nickname if you did. Fu chatted happily with the blonde Jean Churiki. Hey Nardo. Kissed any more guys lately? Yagura, the Ondame Mizukage took off a large hat he had on his head to hide his face as he joined the others on the bridge. Hey Yagura, how many people think that you're still a little kid? Naruto shot back before the two laughed and exchanged a handshake and a half hug. Good to see you. The same for you all. Yagura smiled at the others on the bridge. Who are we waiting for still? Utakata questioned quietly. Han and Roshi, I'm hoping they arrive together as they are both from Iwa. Naruto commented as he spread his churka out over the island and smiled as he turned to the left. You would be right then Naruto Uzumaki. Roshi commented as he and Han approached the group of Jinchurikis, Han easily towering over his traveling partner. Good to see you too, Yagura said politely. Well that's all of us. Naruto clapped his hands together with a huge smile. What now, Uzumaki? Han questioned as he looked around the area they were in. Now we have a Jinchuriki powwow and figure out what our next move will be, Naruto said cheerfully. We are definitely not calling this meeting by that horrible name. Kurama snorted and Naruto watched amused as the other Jinchurikis looked around confused at the new voice. That was Kurama, the good old Nine Tails. Naruto answered the unanswered question. Why can we hear him then? Gara asked. Because I'm just that amazing. Kurama huffed and this caused some laughter and eye rolls from the Jinchurikis on the bridge. Nah. I think it's because you each have some of my churka within your body since I fixed your seals and since you are all within distance of Kurama you can hear him at times. Naruto theorized. I knew being around Shikamaru would wear off on you. Gara smirked. Well Shikamaru didn't think you used to be so dramatic, so I must have worn off on you. Naruto commented back with his own smirk. Come on guys, I think I have the perfect spot for us to hang out. Naruto motioned the others to follow him. Soon the odd group of ninjas was walking down the main street of the island, 
People were smiling kindly to the visiting ninjas while some greeted them happily. Why is everyone so happy and nice here? Fu asked keeping herself close to Naruto and Killer B as the group walked. I came here on a mission back in my Janan days and ever since we took out Gato it looks like it has been flourishing. Also not everywhere is like Taki Fu. We have to give everyone a fair chance, Naruto said wisely and Fu nodded. I still hate being part of Taki, Fu mumbled. Once this is all over we can work on bringing you into Konoha or wherever you want to go. Naruto assured the mint green haired Jean Churiki. Naruto? A voice called out and the whole group turned, tense slightly before Naruto waved his hand to silently tell them to stand down. Inari? Naruto looked at the taller version of the little kid he and Team 7 had ran into their first time they came here. You came back. Inari rushed the blonde and hugged him happily. Naruto chuckled and hugged him back. Did you ever doubt me? Naruto teased and let the small boy climb onto his shoulders. Nope, are you going to come by the house? Mom would love to see you. Inari weaved his fingers into the blonde hair to get a better grip. Of course, in fact I was hoping to be able to use the same training area that my team used before. Naruto questioned. I'm sure Grandpa and Mom will let you guys use it, but we better ask her first. Inari tugged the blonde's hair to lead him the correct way towards his house. This place is peaceful, I wish I was the cage here instead as it seems like less hassle. Yagura muttered to Gara who nodded his agreement. Naruto? Is that you? Tsunami asked in pleasant surprise as she opened the door to see her son on the shoulders of Naruto and a ragtag group of ninjas from many different nations standing behind him looking around warily. Hi Tsunami-chan, it's good to see you again. I know this is short notice, but I was hoping my friends and I could use the same place my team we used last time? Naruto asked hopefully. Oh of course you can Naruto. Just make sure you and your friends are back here in time for dinner though. Tsunami pointed her wooden spoon in the blonde's face, the blonde flinched back as the spoon brought memories of Yoshino Wakta's and Shikamaru's hands whenever they got too close to one of the pots while cooking dinner. You're the best Tsunami-chan. Naruto smiled cheerfully at the woman and gently let Inari down, the little kid pouted a bit, but waved at the other ninjas before he scurried into the house. I know, just don't work yourselves too hard. Tsunami told the group who all shifted unsure how to respond to the warning. We won't, thank you, Naruto said for the group and herded them away and into the forested area where the trees still had the kunai marks from his and Sasuke's tree climbing training. This is a very peaceful and beautiful place. Yugito commented as they stopped by a small sparkling lake. I thought it would be perfect for us to mediate, get to know each other and try out a new jutsu I found in my clan's library. Naruto smirked. What kind of jutsu? Han questioned interested. A Nuzumaki clan jutsu, the Nine Tails has been housed inside a Nuzumaki since the founding of Konoha. Naruto explained. Why was your clan the only bloodline that can be Jin Shuriki's? Roshi raised an eyebrow. Because of these, Naruto said simply and brought his arms up and his golden churka chains extended from his body and weaved their way between the Jin Churikis, not touching any of them. Whoa, are these made out of churka? Fu questioned amazed, touching one gingerly. They can restrain tailed beasts and pretty much anything else as well. Uzumakis also have large churka reserves and sealing is in their blood so that combined with the churka chains it makes the Uzumaki bloodline perfect to house a tailed beast. Naruto explained. That makes sense. Utakata said quietly. So, I found a jutsu in my clan's library that will make this meeting a lot easier for us all and if you want I can teach each of you the jutsu as it is surprisingly rather easy. Naruto offered. We shall see what the jutsu does first. Yugito commented and the others agreed with her words. Alright here we go. Kushios, Oju, Anba, Summoning, Tailed Beast, Kurama. Naruto made the needed hand seals after biting his thumb and he slammed his palm onto the ground. The group watched as a small puff of smoke appeared and sitting there was a small nine-tailed fox with an unimpressed look on his red furry face. What the hell brat? If you were going to use the jutsu you could at least have put more churka into it so I wasn't the size of a cat. Kurama growled as he flared his nine foxtails annoyed. Sorry Kurama, I just thought it wouldn't be so obvious where we all were if there wasn't a towering nine-tailed fox that is supposed to be sealed within me appearing in the middle of the forest on a random island. Naruto shot back. How did you do that? Can you show me? B asked excited at the idea of bringing out the eight tails. It's like a summoning jutsu. However since the tailed beasts are sealed within us we don't need to sign any contract and just add in the tailed beasts name at the end, the more churka put into the jutsu the larger the bijus will become. Naruto explained and B grinned. Ah yeah. Kushios, Oju, Gyuki, summoning, tailed beast, Gyuki. K 
Killer B did the same thing as Naruto and a small version of the eight tails appeared and smiled up at B. Soon each Jin Churiki had a chibi version of their tailed beast beside them. Fu was cuddling Cho Mei happy that her best friend was now tangible. Shukaku was on Gar's shoulder, his giant tail wrapped gently around Gara's neck as he rested his head on top of Gar's red hair. Yugito was petting Matatabi's blue fur with her two tails twitching happily. Yagura had Isabu resting by his hand while Roshi and son Goku were both smoking calmly. Kokua was perched on Han's armored knee, Seiken and Utakata were blowing bubbles together in a silent competition. B and Gyuki were wrestling, B holding his own against the sucker-covered tails of his partner and Naruto watched the others with a pleased smile on his lips as Kurama was curled up on his lap, his tails wrapped around himself and Naruto's waist. Good idea, huh? Naruto asked Kurama smugly. It wasn't horrible. Kurama grumbled. Oh Kurama you always say the nicest things. Naruto fluttered his eyelashes only to be bit on the hand by the irate fox. That got a snort from B, Gyuki, Shukaku, Gara, and Yagura. Alright, now I think we need to talk about the Akatsuki and how we are going to deal with them this time around. As we speak Shikamaru should be taking out Hidan like he did in our future, Naruto said in his cage voice. Good, bastard deserved to be taken out. Yugito grinned to match the two tails grin at hearing the news of Hidan. The next while was spent with Naruto outlining his and Shikamaru's plan and everyone was on board with the ideas. So, until I sent for you all. I think it would be safest to leave your bunshines in place and all of you should join beyond Shima Game Island Turtle, Naruto stated. That's a solid plan, it is a safe place for all of us and while we are there we can achieve the same level of partnership and power you two have achieved with Kyuki and Kurama, Yagura agreed gesturing to Naruto and Killer B. It would give us an advantage, if we were even close to being on par with you two. Gara added and the others agreed, B beaming at the idea of having more of his siblings at what he considered his home. I'll talk A into letting us use it as a safe haven, B said determined. What about you Naruto? Fu looked at the blonde. I have to stay out here and work on taking out the Akatsuki members amongst other things. Naruto smiled reassuringly at the girl. Okay. Just be careful. Fu nuzzled her face into Cho Mei who buzzed his wings soothingly. I will I promise. Naruto swore. B, take this seal and placed it in your house on the island. The blonde gave Killer B a Harashin sealed kunai, B understanding what it was took it without question with a silent promise to place it in his house. Now I think we can do whatever we want until Inari comes to get us for dinner, just make sure not to freak him out when he comes to get us. Naruto ordered before he closed his eyes and focused alongside Kurama. He knew he couldn't reach sage mode just yet, but he could still connect to his nature churka and that alongside the Shodai's necklace pulsing churka soothingly the blonde fell into a relaxed state. Tilda slash Tilda Shikamaru was following Hidan who was approaching the same area he had been found in during their second encounter during his future timeline. Hidan had no idea that Shikamaru was trailing him, the Nar didn't make Anbu commander for nothing. Shikamaru was glad he wasn't impulsive otherwise he would have attacked Hidan the moment he saw him. Hidan hit the target point and Shikamaru sent out his shadow, easily catching the Jashin follower as he dropped down from the tree. What the fuck? Why can't I move? Hidan shouted, Shikamaru had forgotten how much Hidan swore. That would be my doing, come on Hidan we have places to be. Shikamaru smirked and took off running towards the trap in the Nara forest. Hidan shouted swear words at the Nara as he forced to follow the Chunin. Shikamaru stopped in the perfect spot and turned to face Hidan who was still throwing out swear words as he eyed the wires covered in paper bombs surrounding the clearing in the forest. Who the hell are you? Hidan shouted angrily. The one who ends you, Shikamaru stated with a smirk as he stretched out his shadows to attach to the wires and to Hidan's limbs. Ha! I'm immortal, I can never die, Hidan laughed insanely. That may be true, but that doesn't mean I can't end you. Shikamaru raised an arm. Keijo no Jutsu. Shadow pull jutsu. Shikamaru watched as the paper bomb covered wires wrapped around Hidan's body, Shikamaru pulled out his tando and threw it at the Nara clan symbol. What was that? Hidan shouted before a crack came from the clan symbol and the ground fell away to reveal the trap hole and the awaiting ceiling scroll below his feet. Shikamaru stayed silent as he pulled out a cheap silver lighter and he flicked it open and watched with sorrow filled eyes as he flicked it a few times until the flame lit up. What are you going to do with that? Hidan asked panicked. See I can't let you run away, surprisingly I need you for a plan later on. Shikamaru raised the lit lighter up. Goodbye Hidan, you will never kill again. With those words Shikamaru tossed the lighter and watched as Hidan went up in flames as he screamed out in either pain or pleasure Shikamaru wasn't sure with this nutcase. 
Shikamaru cut a wire and watched as Hidan dropped down into the hole and the scroll sealed his smoldering body away. Shikamaru waited a few moments before he retrieved the scroll, placing it in his pack feeling very content. Hidan was gone and he would never kill Asuma or anyone else ever again. Shikamaru felt like a weight was lifted off his shoulders as he walked away from the clearing and back to his house. He was heading straight towards his room, but was sidetracked when Asuma appeared in front of him with an easygoing smile and suddenly it was all worth it. There you are Shikamaru, I wanted to come by and congratulate you for making Chunin alongside Naruto. I'm really proud of you you know. Asuma scratched his head sheepishly. Asuma. Shikamaru breathed out before he shoved his hands into his pockets. Do you want to play a game of shogi or watch some clouds together? I'd like that Shikamaru. Asuma smiled and the two walked out to the porch and started to play a game of shogi. Let me tell you about the king, Shikamaru. Asuma looked up at his student. Shikamaru felt a smile come across his lips and listened to his sensei tell him about the king and the will of fire. So overall I think yesterday went well. Naruto commented from his place in Shikamaru's room a shogi board between the two. I'm surprised at how easy it was to take down Hidan, I had expected a harder fight, Shikamaru said as he made his move against the blonde. You knew all his tricks and how to defeat him without having to get close to him, plus you are a genius Shika. Naruto pointed out as he made his counter move. The others should be with B on the island by now minus Kara as he said he had things to take care of back in Suna first. Then I think we need to talk about our next move. Jirai might be bringing up your 3 year training mission soon. Shikamaru glanced up at the blonde who was leaning against the wall behind him. I'm not sure we will be doing that this time around, he seems really happy with Bachan, Kakashi Sensei and myself at the Senju estate. There is no immediate threat like last time and we have two inside men on the Akatsuki and you just took out one of their members. Naruto commented. Even if he brought it up, I don't think I would agree to leave the village for that long of a time. I was gone for three years last time and I missed a lot of time with my precious people, I know everything and more than what Uro Senin could teach me so there would be no point in leaving. However I think that we still need to a take a little trip, hopefully not a three year long one. Shikamaru, move to counter Naruto's attack. Yeah I know, we can use Akira and Akito to get us out of the village and then we will proceed from there, Naruto sighed. The things we do to keep a war from starting. I know, we are going to have do a lot of explaining when we get back. It's going to be so troublesome, Shikamaru sighed. Are you still set on become Hokage after we achieve our objective? Once we do, we won't know any events that could come to pass, so we don't need to fight like before. I'm not sure to be honest, I could wash my hands of it saying been there, done that. Which is true, but I was thrusted into it because the other cages were killed and I was the only suitable choice, Naruto said in a low and serious voice. We will cross that bridge when we get there, just know that whatever you choose to do I will follow you. Shikamaru smiled and held his fist up in honor of Killer B. I would be lost without you at my side Shika, Naruto chuckled as he bumped his fist against the Naras. Of course you would be, now prepare to lose. Shikamaru smirked as he made his last move and the reaction was Naruto yelling out as he fell to the side dramatically. Tilda slash Tilda Sasuke. Hiruzen blinked in surprise at the Uchiha that was standing on his doorstep. I've thought about what you said and I've reached a decision, Sasuke said looking up from under his banks. The Sundaime watched the preteen silently as he seemed to steady himself for what he was about to say. I've decided. I've decided I just want my Nissan back, I want to get strong enough so he won't have to put himself in danger to protect me. I need to get stronger so he can come home and we can be a family again. I will not fault all of Konoha for the mistake of one madman as long as he is dealt with, Sasuke said with steel in his voice and in his eyes. I'm glad that is your decision Sasuke. If you would like. As I'm no longer Hokage I have some free time on my hands and I would be honored if you would become my student. Hiruzen held up a hand in an agreement. Sasuke, looking stunned, but pleased by the outcome of the talk with the son Daime took the older man's hand and shook it firmly and with conviction in his onyx eyes. I will train my hardest, Sasuke said firmly. That's all I can ask for, now if you want to wait a moment for this old man to get changed we could start today. Hiruzen had to bite back a laugh at the excited puppy look Sasuke was sporting. I can wait, Sasuke said trying to play it off coolly much to his new mentor's amusement. Tilda slash Tilda are you too sure you want to do this? Tsunade asked the red-headed twins in front of her, the Hokage hat sitting on the back corner of her chair. On the desk in front of her was a file outlining a training mission and then two personal files for Shikamaru Nara and Naruto Uzumaki. We are. These two with enough training can change everything horrible we have seen in our visions, Akira stated firmly as he and Akito stood before the god I'm. 
putting the next part of the plan into motion. If you are completely sure, then as Hokage I approve of this training mission. You still have to get past all the people who are extremely protective of Naruto and Shikamaru, if you can survive that then you are worthy to bring the two out of the village. Tsunade chuckled as the two redheads paled at the task set for them. Getting the approval of parents slash guardian slash pseudo siblings. It would be by far the hardest mission the two would ever have to face in any lifetime. Lady Hokage. Akito bowed his head before the two left the office. We are doomed, Akira stated simply, pausing to bang his head against the wall across from the door. Who do you want to visit first? Akito asked, dragging his twin out of tower. Well Naruto and Shikamaru are still at the Nara compound, so we should visit them last. I guess we need to face Jiraiya, Kakashi and Iruka first. Akira shuddered at the mere idea as they adjusted their course to head towards the Senju estate where the three Churka signatures were located at the moment. I don't think we can do this without making them suspect. Akira trailed off and went to grab Akito by the back of his cloak to pull him away from the front door, but Akito reached out and banged on the door with a smirk at Akira. We managed to get Lady Tsunade's permission, I think we can handle this, Akito scolded as Jiraiya opened the door, he grinned at the two redheads. Akira, Akito. Nice to see you both. Jiraiya boomed and escorted the two inside the house and into the foyer where Kakashi and a blushing Iruka entered a few moments after. You as well. Akira nodded at Jiraiya and smiled happily at how well the Sanin looked nowadays. We are to assume there is a reason behind your visit? Kakashi spoke up eyeing the two with his one visible eye. You are correct Kakashi, we have already spoken with Lady Hokage about this, but we wanted to get your approval as well. Akito spoke up, both the redheads suddenly looking serious about what they are about to say. We were approved for a training mission, the two of us will be training Naruto Uzumaki and Shikamaru Nara for the foreseeable future, Akira said, his voice steady and serious. The two waited for the reactions from the three ninjas in front of them and they were not disappointed. Jiraiya's jaw dropped before he snapped it shut and studied the two with a serious look in his eyes. Kakashi's visible eye narrowed and you could faintly make out the stern line of his lips being pressed together from underneath his mask while Iruka just looked at the two redheads with wide eyes as he tried to understand. Why do you want to take them on a training mission? Kakashi asked. What do you think you could teach them that they could not learn here? We have foreseen a war, Naruto and Shikamaru are pivotal characters in it, but they are uneducated and are not properly prepared for the horrors of what the enemy will unleash. We can give them the training they need to win this war before it takes its toll on the five nations. Akito spoke up, having foreseen this type of questioning from the three in front of them. I was considering taking Naruto on a training trip, why don't I come along? Jiraiya offered. No, you are needed here in Konoha. You are in the middle of rebuilding a life here and after all the ninjas here need someone powerful to teach them how to fight and survive properly. Akira shook his head, almost a bit desperately. He wanted his godfather nowhere near the battles that he knew were going to be taking place during the training mission. You will protect them? Iruka asked, eyes cold and hard as he studied the twins. The two gulped silently, reminded why no one messed with Iruka-sensei. We will lay down our own lives to protect them, Akira said firmly. We will also fight to make sure we do not die so we can keep protecting them. Akito finished and Diruka nodded sharply sitting back in his seat. Can't argue with that. Kakashi scratched his chin giving his own consent. Naruto and Shikamaru will be in contact with us, if I do not hear anything from them after a month I will leave the village and find you. Jiraiya promised. Fair enough, thank you. Akira inclined his head and the duo stood up giving the group their goodbyes. Going to talk to the Naras now? Good luck. Jiraiya waved cheerfully at the two before he shut the door on the slightly terrified look on the twins' faces. That went better than expected. Akira mused as the two left roof to roof towards the Nara compound. This one will be harder than that. Akito grumbled, dread in his words. Tilda slash Tilda. What? Akira blinked in shock at Shikaku and Yoshino Nara. We will allow you two to take Shika and Naruto out on the training mission of yours. Yoshino repeated her husband's words, amused at the looks on the redhead's faces. Just protect them and teach them well, Shikaku stated as he got up from his kneeling position and went over to the sliding door. He slid it open and smirked when Naruto and Shikamaru, who was dragged by the blonde, came tumbling in. Ahaha? Naruto rubbed his neck sheepishly while Shikamaru looked impassive about being caught. Pack your bags boys. You are going on a training mission with Akira and Akito. Be on your best behavior and learn everything you can, Shikaku said and the two newly minted Chunins grinned at the occupants of the room before they scurried away to their, basically, shared room to start to pack. Keep our boys safe, that is all we're asking. 
Yoshino stood up gracefully moving to her husband's side. We swear we will. The twins said in unison gaining two nods of approval before the heads of the Nara clan left the room. Well that was easier than anyone could have predicted. Akira trailed off as the two got to their feet and headed towards the entrance of the compound. Hmm, Akito agreed eyebrows furrowed in thought as the two walked towards their apartment. Do you think they are on to us? Akira asked in a very low tone of voice. We won't know until much later, Akito sighed eyebrows on furrowing. We will worry about that later, right now we have some last minute tweaks to make to our plans before we leave tomorrow morning. Akira waved his hand as the two climbed the steps to their apartment. Tilda slash Tilda TCH, why do you guys get to go on a training mission with Akira and Akito senseis? Kiba huffed crossing his arms, his eyes conveying the sadness that he is actually feeling about his two friends leaving the village for an unknown amount of time. Because we are just awesome like that, don't be jealous, Naruto teased Kiba as he gave a farewell scratch between the ears to Akamaru. Shikamaru and Naruto were at the front gates surrounded by their friends and family, both were wearing standard shinobi outfits as were Akira and Akito, they wore black shinobi pants, sandals, long sleeve shirts, green flak jacket and forehead protectors on their respective parts of their bodies. This is going to be so troublesome, Shikamaru sighed as he adjusted his backpack as he smiled at Team 10. Choji was making short work of the bag of chips he held while Ino had one of her blue eyes covered with her blonde bangs completely and the other eye looked glassy while Asuma stood behind the two his eyes looking wise and full of worry and sadness as he stared at his student. I'll be alright, no need to worry. We'll be back soon and I'll teach you guys some of the stuff we learned. Look after them would you Asuma sensei? Shikamaru had promised and was surprised when Ino threw herself into his arms for a hug. Idiot, don't you dare die? She whispered in his ear before she backed off to stand by Choji and Asuma once more. Like I would, that would be bothersome. Shikamaru smirked and exchanged a brief hug with Choji before Asuma placed his hand on Shikamaru's head. Be careful kid, when you get back we'll have to spar. Asuma smiled, no cigarette between his lips for once. Then you better keep training old man, Shikamaru teased and Asuma just laughed joyfully. The sound making Shikamaru's heart hurt a bit before he backed off to be fussed over by his father and mother. Naruto was in a similar position between his godfather, surrogate older brother and great aunt. He was just glowing with happiness while the rest of his team, teammate and team guy stood nearby. We'll be just fine Bachan, Urosenin, Kashini. Naruto assured the three that were by him. Somehow that doesn't reassure me at all. Jirai muttered only for Naruto's smile to grow larger. Naruto. When you get back I'll be stronger I promise. Sakura said with determination shining in her eyes and Tsunade gave a small, smile at the sight of her student. I know you will be Sakura-chan. We'll be an unstoppable team. Naruto surprised her by pulling her into a tight hug, she surprised everyone else by hugging him back. Don't slack off on your training Dobi will have a fight to see who improved the most when you get back. Sasuke stepped forward, Hiruzen standing behind his student puffing on his pipe. Don't be too disappointed when I cream you with some unstoppable jutsu I learn team. Naruto smirked back at the Uchiha, the two exchanged firm yet friendly handshakes. I'll bring back Itachi to the village for you Sasuke. Naruto thought determinedly. Gee good luck and Naruto-kun, Hinata said fiddling with her fingers as she smiled shyly at her crush. Thanks Hina-chan, don't worry about me. Hey when I get back. Do you want to spar and go for dinner or something? Naruto asked in a soft voice and watched as her face turned a bright red and she couldn't speak. But she nodded rapidly before fainting into Kurunai's shoulder. The Jounin just smiled at Naruto wishing him luck before Naruto turned to Shino and gave the usually quiet ninja thumbs up and was rewarded with a nod. Grow strong Naruto. Lee gave his blonde friend thumbs up. You better learn how to use that katana, I want a match when you come back. Ten Ten pointed to Raijin that was attached to Naruto's hip. You're on. Naruto grinned at her and Neji stepped forward holding out his hand. We'll have a proper spar when I get back. I'm looking forward to see how you go forward on your own path," Naruto stated shaking Neji's hand gaining a small smile from the Huda while Guy just cried on about the beauty of youth and friendship. While Naruto was saying goodbye to the teams, Shikamaru did the exact same thing and the two stood beside Akira and Akito as the ninjas on duty opened the gate for them to leave the village. The group waved at the gathered group as the people staying behind waved and shouted their goodbyes at them. Everything is beginning. Shikamaru muttered as the four sped off into the surrounding forest outside the gates. When we come back so much will have changed, I hope they are going to be ready. Naruto muttered. Think we'll survive this time around? Naruto asked quietly as the two moved farther away from their home. If we don't we're taking them with us, Shikamaru said seriously. You know it. 
The two exchanged fist bumps and fell into companionable silence. When they were far enough away from the village the four stopped in a clearing, the Chunins made hand signs and two permanent bunshines of themselves appeared by Akira and Akito. Go off and have a training mission, remember to write home, don't get caught and destroy all of the remaining snake nests. Naruto ordered the bunshines in his cage voice, the four nodded and leapt off in the direction of the closet village. Time to change, we are too recognizable in these outfits. Besides we are going to win a war before it begins. We need to look good. Naruto whined and Shikamaru rolled his eyes fondly before the two focused and used an Uzumaki clan hench to change to their own preferences. They both were 16 once more, they knew what they were about to do could not be done as 13 year olds and the Uzumaki henge brought the two up to the age they were most powerful at. Naruto was wearing his black and dull orange jumpsuit with black sandals, his forehead protector under his blonde bangs with the black ties flowing down his back. He had a short-sleeved red cloak with black flames and the raijin attached across his lower back where most chunins had their tintos. He had the orange bandages around his ankles and wrists to help stabilize his churka chains. Shikamaru had his green outlined mesh showing from underneath his black shinobi pants between the cuff and his black sandals. He had a suma's trench knives attached to his belt alongside the numerous pockets that lined his waist. Instead of a green flak jacket he wore wide collared gray sleeveless hooded cloak that flared out behind him like Naruto's did. He had his own katana slung across his back and black armored fingerless gloves that stopped at his elbows and under the cloak he had a plain sleeveless black crew cut shirt. Naruto was sitting cross-legged in the shade of a large tree, focusing on the energy around him, doing his best to pinpoint the location of Nagato, Konan and the Path of Pain version of Yahiko. Shikamaru was perched on a tree branch high above Naruto keeping watch on the area. His eyes were directed upwards when he felt a spike of familiar churka and the following stream of sand that was headed towards him. Shikamaru smirked and held his hand up, letting the sand swirl around his wrist and forearm, letting two things settle in his open palm. The sand attached to Shikamaru's skin while the Chunin looked at the two scrolls in his hand. One of the scrolls had the name Sasori and the other one had Daedara. Shikamaru felt his lips turn up into a grin as things were moving along nicely. Tell Gara, thanks and to await for our call for the final battle. Until then stay safe and hidden. Shikamaru told the sand that shifted before it slid off his skin and flew in the direction it came. Got them, huh? Same place as last time. Naruto called from his spot as he came out of his trance making Shikamaru drop down next to the blonde. That makes things easier, oh and Gara dropped off a present for us. Shikamaru showed Naruto the two scrolls that had the sealed bodies of Sasori and Daedara in them. Only a few more. Naruto murmured as Shikamaru put the scroll next to the one containing Hidon. How are you going to get Nagato to listen to you this time around? Shikamaru asked as the two left tree to tree towards the location Naruto discovered. Same as last time, he'll listen to me. He's an Uzumaki, all he wants is peace and he believes in Uro Senen's ideal of peace, Naruto said. Do you want me to come in with you? Shikamaru asked quietly as the two looked at the tree that was housing their targets, masterfully created by Konan. Yeah. I think it's a good idea, Naruto said after a moment of thought. I'll let you do most of the talking though. Shikamaru smirked and Naruto rolled his eyes. Let's do this, Naruto said seriously and stepped forward and passed through the barrier easily, followed by Shikamaru both of them holding their hands up in the worldwide gesture of surrender. Who are you? How did you find us? A female voice called out as paper swirled to show Konan, her usual paper flower in her hair. We are not here to fight. We just want to talk. I'm Naruto Uzumaki and this is Shikamaru Nara. We mean you and Nagato no harm, we just wish to talk," Naruto said soothingly and Pain appeared in front of the duo looking at the two of them intently. What do you wish to talk about Leaf Shinobi? Yahiko spoke, eyes narrowing. It's just a bit unnerving to be talking to Yahiko's body, can the real you come out to talk Nagato? Naruto rubbed his head awkwardly. Konan blinked in surprise. Pain inspected the duo once more before he swiftly moved to the side and a swirl of paper exposed Nagato to the two, his red hair limp and covering half his face, his visible eyes staring them down with curiosity. Nice to see you cousin. Naruto smiled cheerfully at Nagato. Who are you Naruto Uzumaki? Nagato rasped out. Good question. Naruto muttered to himself and Shikamaru who just nudged the blonde and raised his eyebrows. We both truly want the same thing. We both want this cycle of hatred to end and for the world to be at peace, Naruto said his feelings on the matter seeping into his tone of voice. The ninja world is ruled by hatred. There is no such thing as real peace. It's impossible as long as we're living in this accursed world, Nagato shouted at the blonde, his form trembling. Then I will break the cycle. 
If there's such a thing as peace, I will find it. I won't give up. Naruto quoted the legend of the Gusty Ninja, the book Jiraiya dedicated to Nagato who inspired him. Nagato looked shocked at the words from Naruto as he remembered a younger version of himself telling Jiraiya the exact same words in the past with the same amount of determination. My name is Naruto, so my name is a precious memento of him. I can't just give up and stomp on this memento. I'll make sure there's peace for Migaku too. Believe in me. Naruto clenched his fists in front of his torso, his blue eyes on fire as he spoke with passion. I don't know if I can believe in what Jiraiya believed in or in the man himself, but you have chosen a different path than myself and in you I can see a different, a better future so I will believe in you Naruto Uzumaki. Nagato lowered his head after a few moments of thought at what the blonde had said. Thank you Nagato, but we need your help. I know you both want peace, you want a life together all three of you and you all do miss Jiraiya. Nagato you are an Uzumaki like me, we are family, please help us. Naruto stepped forward, Shikamaru guarding his flank out of reflex. We will help you Naruto Uzumaki. My cousin, now your plan? Nagato swore his loyalty to Naruto and Konan agreed just as quickly. Naruto and Shikamaru exchanged victorious grins before they explained their plan completely to the two and by the end of it Konan was hiding a grin and a weak smile was crossing Nagato's face. So you don't mind lending one of your paths of pain? Shikamaru asked and Nagato slowly shook his head. Not at all, Nagato said with a smile at the thought of who he was giving that path up for. What is the next step? Konan asked seriously. Well first we have to hunt down Kakuzu, but from what I'm sensing he's close by, Naruto said after closing his eyes briefly. Do you think you can move from here? Shikamaru eyed the contraption Nagato was attached to. I'm very weak, I will be able to control my paths but nothing more. Nagato admitted, hating his own weakness. Ah, yeah I have an idea about that. I found this kinjutsu in the clan library Bachan has, I think this may be of assistance. Naruto pulled out another scroll. Do it. Nagato nodded his head and Naruto knelt in front of Nagato and placed the scroll between his lips and made the hand sign of the ram. He closed his eyes and focused his churka, letting it curl around him and Nagato. Uzumaki Kinjutsu Bodhi Shufaku Body Restoration. Naruto bit down on the scroll with all his jaw strength and his chirka blind and Konan and Shikamaru briefly. When the two looked back they saw Naruto standing on his feet looking extremely pleased with himself. In front of him was a man with red hair covering his face, the same age as Konan and had black piercings on either side of his chin leading up to his lips. His skin was no longer wrinkled and old, he was young and at his prime. Nagato? Konan edged closer to her best friend worriedly as Nagato examined of his hand and his body. I can't believe this. Nagato spoke, even his voice sounded younger and less weighed down. Believe it cuz. Naruto beamed. Our clan are utter geniuses, trust me on this. How long will this last? Nagato curled his fingers and toes happily. For as long as you live, like I said utter geniuses, oh. Here tie these on and focus your churka into them. I think you will like what happens next. Naruto grinned and helped Nagato wrap red as his hair bandages on Nagato's wrists. Naruto stepped back as Nagato raised his right hand and watched amazed as golden churka chains erupted from him and hit the wall in front of him. Uzumaki clan bloodline I guess. Naruto flicked his wrists, showing his own orange red chains. This is impressive. Well shall we go in a war? Nagato let his chains disappear and he smiled at Konan who beamed back and Shikamaru laughed as Naruto jumped for joy. Konan let the paper tree disappear around them and with a nod from Naruto and the five were off towards Kakuzu's churka. Delta slash tilde everyone know the plan? Naruto whispered to the group around him, each determined in their own way as Kakuzu walked down the path in the forest. Hi. The group nodded before darting off to take up their positions. Moments passed, the only sound was the wind rustling the leaves and birds chirping as they took flight. Suddenly dirt colored paper wrapped themselves tightly around Kakuzu's feet encasing them completely at the same time golden chains shot out and wrapped around Kakuzu's arms holding them out to the side. Kakuzu's green eyes narrowed before the high-pitched sound of wind filled the area. Naruto leapt into view holding a rosin shuriken in his right palm and he rushed towards Kakuzu pouring more churka into the attack. Futon, rosin shuriken, Naruto shouted as he slammed the ball of churka into Kakuzu's chest, pleased as his heightened hearing distinctly heard three heartbeats stop. He darted out of the way as Shikamaru appeared from his spot behind Kakuzu with his own version of the Rasengan in his right hand. The blue swirling churka was offset by black shadows. Cage, Rasengan. He slammed the ball of churka into Kakuzu's back killing the last two hearts. 
Shikamaru kicked the dead body towards Naruto as Nagato and Konan let Kakuzu go and he was sealed into the scroll Naruto had at the ready. Simple and effective. Naruto grinned as he put the scroll with the other three. The next step then? Konan asked, interlacing her fingers with Nagato looking more at peace than she had ever looked. Time to reunite with a certain Uchiha. Shikamaru nodded his head and the group leapt into the trees once more following Naruto's sensory abilities. Tilda slash Tilda yo Itachi, how ya doing there fishy? Naruto greeted as he and Shikamaru dropped down a few feet in front of Itachi and Kisame who were resting by a stream. Naruto Uzumaki and Shikamaru Nara I presume. Itachi looked at the two new arrivals not surprised at their entrance. Kisame grunted and gave Naruto the stink eye, still feeling sore about the whole Churka Chains incident and fishy nickname. Is it time? Itachi asked as he rose up from his spot perched on a flat rock by the stream. Yes, Kisame you can opt out now if you want to or you can help us. Naruto turned serious as he looked at the blue skinned man. I'm done, I'm not gonna fight a war. I'll stay out of your way and come to annoy Itachi now and then after this is all over. Kisame decided and Itachi nodded his head accepting his partner's decision. Goodbye Kisame, Itachi said and Kisame just laughed before he walked across the surface of the stream and took off in the opposite direction of the group. Welcome to, the group Itachi. Naruto grinned as Nagato, Konan and Yahiko came into view. You are a mystery Naruto Uzumaki, Itachi sighed taking in the group and at Shikamaru's request they hinged their clothes to plain shinobi clothing and the red clouds on their cloaks disappeared signaling they were no longer Akatsuki. Take your time to unravel me, Naruto said cheekily, pleased that Itachi wasn't questioning his sudden jump in age. In the meantime, we have some people to bring back. Konan-chan can you create a shrine for us? Shikamaru asked turning to the blue haired Ame ninja, she nodded and raised her arms in front of her. Her hands turned to paper and it swirled around the group and took the form of a shrine. Shikamaru nodded his thanks and together he and Naruto went to work on getting everything ready. Are you sure you want to be the one to do this, you know I can take your place. Naruto asked Shikamaru as the Nara readied himself for what was to come. I'm sure Naruto, in case this goes wrong you need to be able to fight on. Promise me that you will save this world. Shikamaru looked Naruto in the eyes determinedly, Naruto swallowed hard. I promise. Just don't let anything go wrong. I need my brother by my side. Naruto and Shikamaru leaned their foreheads against each other's while they clutched at the other's forearm before Naruto backed up to join Itachi, Konan, and Nagato. Shikamaru knelt down by Fujin circles that held the scrolls of Sasori, Deidara, Hidan, Kakuzu in one path of pain while Yahiko's body stood nearby in another circle with different symbols. The Nara let out a breath of air and nodded at Nagato. Kushios, Edo Tensei. Shikamaru shouted. Kushios, Edo Rintensei, Nagato shouted at the same time as Shikamaru in the shrine Konan created was engulfed with Churka and whipping winds as the floor shook and spilt apart. Naruto threw his arms up in front of his face, squinting his eyes at the place Shikamaru had been standing, trying to use his heightened senses to see what was happening. A Jashin user as a sacrifice for me not Onami Kaze, I am impressed Shikamaru Nara. I will grant your jutsu success. A voice echoed inside of Shikamaru's head, it must have been the Shinigami and sure enough the scrolls in Path of Pain disappeared leaving five people standing in their places. The wind and Churka died down to show Shikamaru with a satisfied smirk on his face. Did it work? Konan whispered her eyes trained on Yahiko. My head hurts. Yahiko groaned rubbing his forehead looking around in shock. Why Yahiko? Are you really here? Konan gasped out stumbling forward, hand interlaced with Nagato's dragging him forward as well. Konan? Nagato? Yahiko gasped out rushing to meet the other two, the three met in a hug and tears streamed down their cheeks as the three Ame ninjas reunited with each other. Naruto swallowed hard as he looked at the Edo Tensei forms of his Tosan and Kasan. Tosan? Kasan? Naruto whispered out walking towards the Ondame Hokage and his wife. And Naruto? Kushina gasped out, covering her mouth as she looked at Minato and back to the teenager in front of her. Hi. Naruto blinked rapidly to stop tears from falling. Oh my baby boy. Kushina rushed forward and wrapped her arms around her son tightly, burying her face in his spiky blonde hair while Naruto clung to his mother with all his being, the two slumping down to the floor. He glanced up from her shoulder to see Minato kneeling down in front of him his eyes alight with emotions. Naruto, I'm so sorry, Minato whispered running his fingers through Naruto's banks. Don't be Tosan. Kurama is the best and it would be so weird if he was never sealed inside of me, so thank you. Naruto grinned at his father who gave a watery smile before he joined the hug. 
Shikamaru smiled at the family reunion before he turned his gaze to the remaining people in the room. Does the back of his cloak say the Yondame Hokage? Tobirama asked eyeing the writing on the back of Minato's cloak. A fourth Hokage, excellent, Hashirama laughed joyfully, his arms around Mito Uzumaki his wife as the two lovers reunited. Actually we have a goddamn Hokage now. Shikamaru spoke up drawing the Nidime and Shodai's attentions. Really? Hashirama asked excited. Tsunade sent you. Shikamaru reported and bit back a laugh at the deflating look Hashirama got and the laughter Mito let escape from her lips. How is the village still standing? He muttered and Shikamaru smothered a snort, knowing full well what the Shodai was referring to. Who are you two? Tobirama asked eyeing Itachi and Shikamaru. Itachi Uchiha, Itachi said plainly not caring at the glare he got from the Nidime. Shikamaru Nara and I am sure you all have questions as to why you have been brought back to life. Shikamaru bowed in respect to the past Hokages. Shikamaru is right, we have no time to waste. Naruto spoke up as he extracted himself from the smothering hug Kushina and Minato had him in. I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze and we have a war to win, Naruto said firmly. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.